All right, finally in the shop, I've got this giant big box and I have to tell you, I am super stoked. I know you guys have already seen the video uh, preview picture. You've already seen the video title. You know what this video is about, but I have not unboxed this machine yet. What do I have here on top? Well, I'm gonna get to that. This box was sent to me by my friend Ryan at Spiker Workshops. Now, Ryan is about 28 years old and for the last several years, he's actually been getting into 3D printing very, very hardcore. Now, he has a passion for design and for the radio control hobby. Mix that with some 3D printing and one of the first things we had ever seen from this guy was this completely 3D printed and assembled snow blower. Now this is a huge unit. You guys have seen this uh, in past videos if you follow along with RC Adventures and I gotta tell you, for being 3D printed, Ryan is a simple genius. A big rod going through the middle, keeping all these uh, 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 auger, the auger in place, as well as a slipper clutch on the inside in case a branch or something gets stuck in here. Now, this whole assembly was actually built just to fit right on the front of a Kyosho Blizzard. And in fact, they're working on, uh, Ryan's working on a way to try to hook one of these up to a one tenth scale trail truck, because we would all love to be able to be uh, clearing snow from our driveways from the warmth of inside the house. Now. Forget all this, even though this is beautiful, because we came to see what was inside the box today. I just wanted you to remember who Ryan Spiker was, because for being one dude running a company, doing all this design work plus the printing, I think it's, it should be shouted out. Now, without further ado, let's cut into the box. in a box with styrofoam. That's one great way to ship it. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. The radio, Eternogy 9X, 2.4 gigahertz, nine channel. Oh, this is the back bed for it. Oh my goodness, I think it's all assembled. Wow, way to pack it, man. Oh, I gotta be careful, I see why. It's like a magic trick, all of it just keeps coming out. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa. Look at this, it's huge. Wow, okay, I'm gonna put you off to the side. Wow, okay, all the parts he used. This is for the full package that he offers. Uh, 1060 brushed electronic speed controller. 1060 brushed, all three of them are brushed electronic speed controllers at 60 amps. And there it is, my friends, in all of its glory. It's like a piece of artwork, not just an RC. It's really difficult to explain uh, how large this is. The track size is uh, the standard Kyosho Blizzard uh, track. In fact, these are all newly designed tracks by Spiker, check it out. Now to answer your question for those that are Kyosho Blizzard owners, do these tracks fit on a Kyosho Blizzard? And the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, apparently you can get these uh, tracks for, uh, for your Kyosho Blizzard from Ryan, but look at how much depth these treads have. This is almost like a, a cat style of uh, tread. On the inside, Oh man, I, I, you guys are learning with me. I haven't seen this at all. You're learning right along as I see it. Oh my goodness, I see something special in the back. But first, a flip down ladder. The door opens on the inside, a complete control board. Oh my goodness, I can see that the dashboard has been printed as well. 
He's got little notes for me all over the truck. Uh, here is where the snow blower will actually uh, be controlled, the lift up and down. But one of the things we wanna uh, uh, make sure to point out in this video is that this is not just a snow cat. This can be used at all different times of the year. I am so excited to see what's going on. You can easily uh, remove uh, the, the blower option, of course. This is the bar that raises and lowers the blower um, in case you're over bumpy terrain and you need to, you know, help it float. Mirrors on here. What? <laughs> and he even stuck reflective material on there. The other side. Oh, I'm gonna have to learn. I think it's taped shut, that's why, but this whole thing lifts up. That's cool, can my fingernail slice through? It can. <gasps> Look at that, oh, neat. I know guys, I'm like, I should just shut up because I'm just like, oh, look at this, look at that. But this is just something else in, in person. The amount of time it would take to print something like this. Um, and as I was talking to Ryan, he was explaining how he actually has uh, larger nozzles on his printer, but still to print off this whole machine itself, just, just this alone for his mega printers takes about 150 hours, 150. But he does sell the plans, like I was saying, if you want to print your own. Of course, different print times for different machines, different nozzles and all that kind of technology, but holy cow. Okay, I've, I've got to figure out how to get the batteries in there. <laughs> to open the body, turn the, side, the slide clips. Slide clips are right under there, though we can't quite see them very well with the camera. Obviously the other side. Aha. Oh wow. I can remove the back box. I noticed there's a servo right there. That means this whole box actually empties out. <laughs> okay, on the inside, the electronics, lipo. Lipo, he asked what tra or what ends I wanted for my batteries. I asked him for the old Traxxas plugs. Here is the receiver. I'm assuming this is a BEC. I may be wrong there. Ah, it's not a BEC. It's actually the switch for the bucket. Uh, this is actually where it plugs in. Okay, here we go. There's the ESCs there. And now to lift the front. Ta-da! Wow, big 540 can size motors on the inside here. Huge on either side, check this out, completely belt driven. People were gonna be wondering, is this just gonna be another Kyosho Blizzard, but it's been completely redesigned. I don't see anything similar whatsoever. He's got a cooling fan here and a cooling fan here for the motors. And then of course the servo for the front arm like I was talking about for the blower. But what I did notice, no servo on the back. It just looks like the opportunity to have a blower there with the arm and that's how it's been stuck. Or possibly even a blade. I even see lights installed in the back. That means that we got lights up front as well. This is just one of the coolest machines I've ever had in this shop, holy cow. I know, I've, I, I'm trying not to say the word wow because I've already said it too many times in this video, but I really am kind of awestruck at what I'm seeing here. The 3D printing uh, world is, is basically changing our world. I think we're still in the baby stages of it, uh, even with these kind of advancements. Uh, this is just showing potential for what we can see in the future uh, and, and let really the imagination run wild because if this is now being printed, what's next? These tires, uh, all these here, are actually hard plastic on the outside. It's not rubber, but it looks like each one has been assembled very well and turned so smooth I was noticing. As I was speaking to Ryan this morning on the phone about this product, uh, he was letting me know that there's about 40 ball bearings inside this unit itself. Uh, and actually the tub chassis is all screwed together. He said there's very, very little glue that's in here. Uh, so he's made it very rigid. Look at the thickness of the chassis walls. Like that is something, <laughs> it looks like it can take some abuse. And some of the, some of the packages like over here, 
Boom, 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 boom. Check it out. There's the new snowblower that goes with it. I'm excited to hook that up to it. It's got the new chute on it. It's got the new ice pick so you can get in there if anything gets jammed. Oh yeah, check it out. Here is uh, uh, the torque tuned motor from Tamiya or Tamiya or Tamiya or wherever you are in the world and how you want to pronounce it. Uh, it's a 540 can size. Here when I was talking originally about the slipper clutch, here's where you can actually tighten up the, the uh, clutch in case something gets stuck in there or if you're getting a little bit too much resistance. Uh, but really what I'm here for, these back pieces, right? Here's blank toppers used for custom projects. If you guys want to build your own uh, bodies for it, you can. And then of course these plastic basher bodies. And I said, well, what, what, what is that? You know, like, what do I do with these? He said, here, open it up, have a look. These basher bodies, if you don't want to have the back dump bed, or if you didn't want to have this cab, or both, you just wanted it to look like a robot, you can actually install these back plates and go to town. Like if you're in mud and you want to, you know, give it a go and start splashing around, you're going to be able to protect all these uh, uh, chassis, uh, or pardon me, all the internal electronics with these uh, back plates. So again, very, very cool and thinking about how to engineer it so somebody uh, that's in the hobby that has different types of hobby needs like they're in construction they want a dump truck or if you're a basher you want to go out and have some fun in the dirt and mud you know you have the ways to protect and to build this spiker cat the way you want to now I think that is actually very very cool we'll fire up the radio <laughs> super neat I am thoroughly intrigued by this whole uh, latching system for the body and this slide clasp right there. Look at that. No body pins to lose, nothing, no cold fingers. Well, oh, cold fingers on cold days, but that looks like it's pretty easy to use. As I was putting in my driver, check it out. It's also engraved on the back window. Here's something else I noticed. Check out the clearance underneath this rig. That's going to be good for any kind of construction site if I want to pull out my excavator and actually have some serious payload. Uh, now I've got that option. I wonder how much dirt this thing can actually hold. Um, but yeah, that clearance is uh, quite high up there. I'm glad to see it. So I'm using a 2-cell 5800. Here is my other 2-cell 5800. <laughs> so it runs on a total of 4S. Okay, with the batteries plugged in, everything's ready to go. Control panel. On off switch. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there are so many lights on it. On the side here, up front, I notice now the cab is so much higher so the driver can see over the snow blower. Listen to those cooling fans humming along in there. Switch up. Oh, nice. Wonder what the lift mechanism is made out of. All right on, it's a screw drive. With a servo consistently turning, turning a shaft that is uh, just one thread for those that don't know what it is. And it's, this is what causes the lifting power. So this, look at this, on the inside chassis rails, there are aluminum angles uh, and all 3D printed lifting mechanism. Amazing, and the bottle, bottom channels as well. Let's lower it down. I'm using this switch on my radio. Up. Stop, down. Wow. What an incredible engineering design. <laughs> Super cool. Okay, so. Oh man. Here's how I lower and raise the plow arm right there. So well done. And this must be for forward and backwards. All right.
right, I've moved it down to the ground so we can see those tracks in motion and give it a good listen to. Look how high it is in the middle. Tons of clearance. Now I'm only at like one eight throttle. Let's turn it around, have a look at it. So smooth. <laughs> there we go. Let's add a little bit of power to it. Here we go. Not bad. That was basically full. I had it at around 80%. You knew I couldn't keep it indoors and I was going to take it outside for you guys. Uh, I want to give it a quick run to see what it can do and uh, you know really see how it handles on this train. Not a lot of snow left, uh, just big piles of hard crusty ice snow, but I think it's a perfect time to try it out and give the Spiker Cat a good test. Getting steeper. Getting steeper. Here we go, right at the top, low throttle. Oh, there we go, no problemo. Oh heck, let's go to the track. <laughs> Here we go through some of the deeper stuff. <laughs> no problemo. <laughs> right on, plenty of power. Alrighty my friends, there you go. I know it was a little bit of a longer video, but I really wanted to showcase uh, what's been done here. Truly magnificent. Glad to see that there's some new options out there in the construction zone area, plus also a, a tracked radio control vehicle. Uh, I gotta say, this wow factor in person is definitely five out of five stars. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you're a subscriber so you can keep up to these unique and exciting uh, RCs that we're able to find Find. and uh, a big shout out to Ryan Spiker for really doing his job to move the radio control hobby forward. Now everybody go check out his channel. I linked it in the video description box. Make sure to subscribe to his channel and become part of his notification squad. Until next time guys, stay safe and get outside and have fun with RC. Bye bye. Oh yeah. <laughs> Straight up and over. Wow, super cool. And stable, coming down on an angle.
just incredible.